associated with people who wanted to have two icons in one digital photograph. And the biggest problem we have, of course, is the selfie, uh, which delays everybody. But I'm delighted to be here, and I want to thank the NCGO, Mr. Parika, Mr. Ribeiro, of course, uh, Mr. Jadija, and C.B. Patel for organising this event. Long before we had Indians in Parliament, we had the NCGO. And the NCGO, which has 105 affiliated organisations, <coughs> speaks for the Gujarati community in this country. And I want to thank each and every one of you for what you have done at a national and local level to keep this great organisation going. But I also want to thank the legend that is C.B. Patel, who, when I was selected in Leicester, which incidentally has the largest number of Gujaratis of any city, out, any city Barry, outside India, because I keep having to tell Barry Gardner that Brent, Brent is only a London borough, whereas Leicester is a city. And when, I, when I was, when I was um, uh, selected, uh, I asked CB, what are the words of Gujarati I most need to learn? And he said a very simple line. He said, <laughs> and he was absolutely right, because I've been dealing with Tatlifs for the last 28 years, and it has been a huge pleasure doing so. I'm sorry that we don't have Leicester really represented at this event tonight. This is very much a London-based organisation. We even have honorary Gujaratis, like uh, Ranjit Bakshi uh, here today. Uh, but I have to say, uh, having this meeting is important. It is impossible for me to disagree with any of the people on the platform, because I regard them all as good friends. Eric, um, even though he's on the other side, and I agree on so many issues, and I agree with everything that Eric said today. Um, I also agree, of course, with my front bench and Mary Craig, who told me a lot of Labour policies, actually, I didn't know about. I didn't know about the diabetes stuff. Uh, I'm very worried, because both uh, CB and I are diabetics. But, but Mary speaks for the party, she set up the party's view. I'm going to make a, a personal plea to you uh, this evening. And finally, Andrew Feldman. Um, Andrew Feldman has done more for the Conservative Party with the British Asian community than any other person that I have seen in my 28 years. you to clap for him, but not vote for him. <laughs> because at every function that I'm at, there is Andrew sitting over there, uh, making sure that he represents the Conservative Party's view. Whatever one thinks of the government and the policies of the government, I have to say that David Cameron and Andrew, because he, he does so in support of his party leader, have done more than I have seen any other party leader and any other party chairman ever doing as far as the Conservative Party is <laughs> However, of course, it's not enough <laughs> for me to convince you not to support that party. Um, but I think that is well worth saying, because remember, when I came into Parliament in 1987, I was the only person of Asian origin. It is a huge joy for me to see so many people of Asian origin selected to stand for all the political parties. The only problem, of course, is the Liberal Democrats, who seem unable to find anyone of Asian origin these days to represent them in a safe seat. So I have great delight when I hear that new people have been selected in whatever party, because it shows the progress of our community, and especially the Gujarati community, which of course, as we know, numbers almost 800,000. And I know from Leicester, the mini Gujarat of the Belgrave Road, the contribution that they have made to our country, Eric knows himself because he has sat and eaten, um, I think, dal and chapatis, my spies tell me, in Bobby's restaurant uh, in Leicester very recently. And lots of you come up there. And the, the fact is um, that now goes without saying. And politicians who patronise the community and say, well, actually, you've all done very well, miss the point. Of course you have to, because it is part of this country and what my parents chose to come here when I was nine years of age, from Aden in Yemen, was because this was the most tolerant and the best country in the world to bring your children up in. My two kids both go to a North London school. It happens to be the same school that Andrew went to, Haberdasher's Asks. 
Uh, and in the past, of course, there were very few Asians there. Now, uh, as you see from the car park, there are many, many Mercedes entering uh, Haberdasher's ass car park. Oh, do we have any Haberdasher's parents here tonight? Um, because it shows, one, uh, because it shows the fact that we want the very best for our children, and that school represents it. So I want to say three things about policies. First of all, education. Of course, we want to send our children to the best schools and the best universities in the country. I think we need to do a lot more about our state school system. I have never believed that the way to solve the problem of education is to somehow put burdens on private schools, in some way to reduce the power of excellence. I actually think we should increase the amount of resources that go to our state schools to enable them to have the best teachers so that all our, all our fellow citizens, whether they can afford it or not, are able to have the best for their kids. Secondly, as far as uh, um, the progress of our community is concerned, I think all governments have failed to ensure that this community is properly represented at the highest levels of the decision making of this country. And I'm not talking about people who are secretaries of state or even MPs. Having done this job for 28 years, if you believe for one moment that an MP has a huge amount of power and is going to change uh, the course of history, that is absolutely wrong. The fact is, when we have the chance to do something about changing the face of Britain, we fail to do so. And you know when they advertised for the shortlist for the chairman of the BBC or the governor of the Bank of England, I was astonished not to see a single Asian face or a single black face on that shortlist. And no matter what people tell you, how well we've done, how much we are part of society, and how, um, we have, how much we've achieved, the fact remains that those who have their hands on the levers of power have simply not changed the way society works. So I want to see more Asian people, more Gujarati people, sitting on the boards of the FTSE 100 companies. And I'm glad, I'm glad that we've got so many entrepreneurs. Subhash Thakra is over here, chairman of the London Chamber of Commerce. Why isn't he, why isn't Subhash on the board of British Airways? Why isn't Alpesh Patel sitting uh, on the board of one of our other big companies like BP or Shell? Um, they've achieved so much in the work that they do. They've established themselves as people who contribute to Britain. But why is it that we don't see this happening in corporate Britain? I have so many young Asian, pe young Asian people who come to me who've done fantastically well in their education. They may have gone to Haberdashers, they may have gone to Oxbridge, the LSE, or wherever. Certainly Ivy League uh, universities as far as we're concerned in our country the Russell Group universities, but they simply can't get to the top of our banking system. Yet if they go to the American <coughs> banks, or if they go to German banks, you find them managing to get to the very top. They go off to Goldman Sachs, and they become managing directors. But look at the boards of our British banks. Where do you see the Asian origin people sitting on those boards? The third issue that I want to raise with you is very much to do with relations with India. I want to commend what the Prime Minister did in pushing the idea of the Mahatma Gandhi statue. I mean, we've all wanted a Mahatma Gandhi statue in Parliament Square, but it's true. It's this Prime Minister, in particular Joe Johnson and George Osborne when he went to India, who uh, announced the statue. And within three months, imagine those of you who've got a house in, uh, in, in Westminster getting planning permission from Westminster Council in three months <laughs> for anything is a huge achievement. But in three months, Robert Davis, as Chair of Planning, was able to give them that planning permission and we had the Mahatma Gandhi statue. Yeah. There's no question... <laughs> there is no question that this is a huge achievement and I commend what they've done. And I want to thank the government for its support in helping us to restore Alfonso Mangos <coughs> to our tables this yeah. summer. Yeah. Yeah. I promised the Prime Minister I'd be sending him a box of mangoes. Uh, after the election. Obviously we can't do it before because I can't be giving free things to the Conservatives. Um, but let me say this, the one area that is missing is all of you. Because when you talk about summit meetings and ministers going abroad, the people they choose to take with them 
are inevitably the Lakshmi Nettles and the Suraj Pauls and the GK Noons and the others. Those who are 200 million plus, I mean, maybe some of you are 200 million plus. George sitting over there, I know, uh, has a sideline of the consultancy. But the fact is, the biggest engine of growth is actually the small business community and the medium-sized business community. And we have not been able, through the current structures, to ensure that that happens. So if we get in, I want to see a Labour government doing more for business-to-business -business contact, which you could do on the internet. I don't think that we should leave it to government to do this for us. We have the enterprise and the energy to do it ourselves, and I want to see that changing. My last point is about migrants and immigration. Very fashionable these days to denigrate migrants, and very easy for some of us to forget what it was like when we first came to Britain. Our children don't understand this, because when I say to Luke and Angeli, you know what it was like for us, um, rather like Andrew, when we came into this country, my father came a year before me and my mother, we lived in a single room above a laundrette in Twickenham. I wish we'd bought the laundrette then, looking at the prices of properties in Twickenham and Richmond. And that's how we all came and that's how we all lived near our relatives. Why did you live next to your aunt? Well, because they lived in Twickenham, so we lived in Twickenham and that's how it all starts. But you know, we shouldn't denigrate the migrant communities and we shouldn't denigrate the Eastern Europeans because actually they have been an engine of growth for our country. Those who come here to work hard and to pay their taxes and to contribute should be celebrated because you will forget this but remember what they said about us. So we have a role to play in not allowing there to be anti-migrant rhetoric. Because the great thing about this great country is that it fulfills dreams. Whether, it is, whether you vote Conservative or Labour, and I agree with Eric completely, there is no such thing as a block vote for the community. The community is far too intelligent not to make decisions on their own terms. For, their, for themselves and their families. But I just believe it's important that when you vote on the, 8th, on the 7th of May, don't vote on the 8th, vote on the 7th, that you remember the importance of governments fulfilling dreams. And one of the things that keeps me in politics, people say to me, isn't it time you went after 28 years? Isn't it time you went and did other things? Okay? The fact is, I will stay until I believe my work is finished. Not until we get an Indian Prime Minister, because that is an inevitability that we are going to get an Indian Prime Minister. Okay? It's going to happen, there's no doubt about that. Um, the fact is, it's when I see us taking our place, the Guj British Gujarati community, at the top table in Britain. When I see that happen, I know my work will have been completed, and I will be very happy to retire gracefully. <laughs> But the fact is, the fight is still there. The door has been opened by each and every one of you. You've each got stories to tell. But for our next generation, we keep that door open and we keep watching them till they get through the door and they get to the top of the stairs. That is what we have to do. Thank you for listening.